And welcome to Capital Talk, a program we hope will have an impact on the future of Kenya. And now, more than ever, I'm Jeff Kenang. And all this week, if you've been watching Capital Talk, you know it's all about Juja. That's right. Half a million population with a voting population of 180,000. That's right. 187,000 votes up for grads. It's a huge one. By elections, five days away. And on the bench, we'll continue to put candidates who want to be on the bench. Let them come and speak. And on the bench today, the youngest of all. That's right, only 29 years old. A man who's worked quite a bit in his 29 years. He's been in the coffee industry. He's been in football. He's been in IT. In fact, he says IT, the 21st century, is what's going to determine the outcome of the Juja by-election. As he's been going around literally door to door, he says, he has a chance. He can bring down the big threes, so-called big three, and he can pass right down the middle, if you will. He's been doing it, and he says with five days to go, people of Juja need change. That's right. He's a Safina candidate, and he says change is new. Yeah. On the bench today, Francis Gaido Nganga, my brother. Gaido. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, eh? Yes. Welcome to the bench. Thanks. Well done, well done. Yes. So, 29 years old, yes, man. Yes. I mean, what, what in the world made you want to get into the murky world of politics? Um, somebody told me something. Politics is not dirty. But the politicians are dirty. And that's why we have failed leadership in Juja. We have uh, stalled projects. We have a vacuum. Um, when I looked at the people who were on offer, um, because I was one of the last people to announce my candidature, uh, I looked at the people and none of them had an agenda. None of them spoke about issues. It was either vote for me because I was there, vote for me because of what. And the, right now the agenda is creating employment opportunities. Uh, because we, uh, Juja the high, has one of the highest population. I think it's the second most largest constituency mm -hmm. after Embakasi. Correct. And uh, we, 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 we have all these people who are jobless. We have all these people who have no hope. And that's why I said, let me vie. Let me, let me try and inspire the young people so that they can have the confidence. You know, and let me, let me tell them that if you're young there, if you're hustling and you're trying to do your business, um, you can do it. You don't need to be a son of somebody. You can just come from nowhere and make it. Yeah. Just like I'm going to make it in these elections. And friends, I, see, I notice you're using a lot of the Obama expressions when he was running. The, you know, change yeah. is inevitable. Yeah. Change you can believe in. Yeah. I see you saying change is new. Change is new. Because people are masquerading as the change. But they've been there. Some of them stayed for terms. And they, they, what, what, what new can they offer? Because you've been there. You had been given the mandate by the people. And you didn't deliver. Because Juja, it's immoral, and I've told you, it's immoral for anyone to say that things in Juja have been working well. Things in Juja have been terrible. The insecurity, you, you know, and I had been personally involved in the mobilization of the, of, the, of the residents. The security in Juja has been wanting. Mm. Every day people used to be killed. When I listened, I was going through the Hansard in Parliament, nobody asked a single question. Of, or nobody, pet, nobody petitioned the Minister of uh, Internal Security. You know, uh, Minister, why is these such and such people uh, being killed? There is no jobs. Looking at the CDF allocations, um, which are supposed to create opportunities for the people in the, in the, in the machine and in the grassroots, there was nothing being allocated for wealth creation. It was just security, many ghost projects, toilets, you know. Why build so many pit latrines? Why build so many toilets? Why your people are hungry? Why your people are being killed? And that's what inspired me to run. Mm. Because I'm telling the people that it's us who are going to force the change. And I'm telling the people it's not about the money. Because there's a lot of people and you know I'm going against the big guns, yeah? <laughs> and a lot of money, Francis. A lot of money out there. Yeah. yeah? There's a lot of money. Guys are lining up here. Get 200, uh, 200 bob, 200 bob each. I'm asking the people. This guy who is giving out the money, this guy who is so, so okay giving you money, it means he has to recover his, uh, his, his expenditure. And where is he going to recover the money from? It's from your CDF, it's from your municipal councils, it's from your county councils. And then the people go back to Nairobi and, you know, and say, you know, it's my money that voted for me, it's voted for me. Because they have a right. 
it's true it's the money who which voted them in and so i'm asking the people your vote is very precious if somebody is giving you money to apply for a job because we are all applying for a job jeff mm -hmm. we are all uh, we are all seeking for a job from the electorate why do i need to pay to have a job did you pay jeff did you pay to be employed at k24 mm -hmm. did you bribe anyone mm -hmm. why is this guy bribing his way to a job so once people start looking at those fundamental issues, then they can know this is why this is the reason why we have failed leadership. Yeah. And that's why we need change. Tell me something, guy. Are people listening to this? Because obviously it sounds great yes. when you're sitting on the bench, when yes. you're telling me, when people are watching you yes. right now, yes. it sounds great. Yes. The people on the ground, yes. Mashinani, yes. in the villages where you go door to door, yes. are they listening to this message? Of course, change doesn't come overnight. But I'm telling them, I don't need to give you money. But always know that first of all look at my policy look at my agenda and that's why as i'm, I'm the first candidate you know mm -hmm. who has uh, threatened no not actually threatened who, are, who has dared anyone else to come to come clean and stick the agenda i made this booklet because um, as we are saying change uh, it's, it's this booklet mm -hmm. which i'm telling people this is my agenda this is what i'm gonna do step by step with security for water for children, nobody even talks about children and they are the future. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I'm telling them that if somebody does not articulate those policies to you, if somebody does not tell you how they plan to do it, if somebody does not give you the, uh, the, the guarantee of honesty, transparency and accountability, if somebody cannot guarantee you those, then he's searching for the wrong, for yeah. the wrong job. Yeah. yeah, I guess the big question everyone is asking, Guy, though, is, yes. Can you beat the big three? Because everyone has been talking about a, a, a three-horse race. Yes, yes. Kavogo, Duo, Alice. Yes. Can you beat those? Can they cancel themselves out and then you slip through in the middle? I don't... I, I, I will only speak for myself. Uh, they have their own campaign strategies. I'm not using their strategy. I'm not doing what they're doing. I'm not randomly assembling people and dishing out something. I'm not doing that. I'm talking to people. I'm on the ground. I'm going door to door. I'm telling them we need change. And I think the general mood of Juja constituency is that we need change. From Gedurai to Ngoliba, everyone wants change. Because as I said, it's immoral to imagine that things in Juja have been perfect. So if you're asking me whether I'm going to win, I'm going to win. I'm going to hit them hard. And, uh, and, and, and it's good also to know that my, my strategy is uh, being accepted by the people. Yeah. Uh, people are seeing that it's a change, even in the way of communicating. I did some a few posters, plastered them around the constituency, and by the following morning there were no posters. Gone. Gone. Gone with the wind. So instead of you know fighting, uh, you know, you know, uh, spoiling the the image of the constituency with my posters, I, I changed. I said, let me do this newsletter. And the back page is my poster. So they have this poster in the house. Yes. They have the, this poster in their pockets. And uh, if anyone else uses the idea, of course, we are, we are changing the face and the campaign strategy. So um, anyone else is free to use it. But I think I have showed people that change has already started. Mm. Yes. And you grew up in uh, I grew up in Juja constituency. Yeah. Born and bred. Born and raised in Kika. Um, then after that, I started uh, working working for myself as an uh, IT consultant. I started a web hosting company, so I was making websites for very many companies in the constituency. Uh, then in 2004, that's when I started working with football. And that's when I started working with Thika United. Mm -hmm. Thika United started in 2004, so I was one of the people who started off with it uh, before it used to play under different names. And I was in charge of the IT, I was in charge of sourcing for new markets for the players. And in 2006, my work has started bearing fruit because I was able to take two boys from Thika United to France for trials at a club called FC Mets. FC Mets used to be in the League One back then, and players like Adebayo, Louis Saha mm -hmm. passed through FC Mets. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, they didn't, uh, they didn't go through, but it just showed my, my, my perseverance, my push. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was this thing you did with the Ministry of Finance? There was something, yes, there was yes, some initiative yes, you started. Yes, um, I, I worked also with Harami Stars, but looking at the model of Thika United, I saw if it, it, if it was replicated countrywide, then we can create a whole load of opportunities countrywide. So I did a proposal one afternoon. 
Then uh, through Hook and Crook, I found a, a meeting. Uh, I secured a meeting with the PS of Finance and uh, presented my proposal. Then he told me he has no power to make that decision. So, But he helped me get um, uh, an interview or a meeting with uh, the budget committee. And so I had to convince him. And uh, in the 2008 budget, um, every constituency received 1 million shillings for grassroots football. Hmm. So 210 million shillings dispersed countrywide wow. uh, through the CDF mechanism. So, um, and, uh, and, and the, some constituencies used the money well and did football activities. I can tell you for Juja, I didn't see anything happen. So you can see I was really pained because I wrote this proposal. Yeah. I knew the money was there, but I didn't see anyone doing anything. And we have to stop this. People have to use the money for their intended purposes. Yeah. Yeah. When you look at so-called CDF projects yes. in your constituency, yes. how does that make you feel? Oh, man, man, man. For some, some of us who know the truth, um, I, the other day I, I just took, took my own time, went to the website, the main CDF office called cdf.go.ke, and I looked under Juja, and it's surprising, you know, in 2008, mm -hmm. um, Jeff, um, I think I have it over here. Yeah. Um, and you can see, you can you can actually see these uh, number 17, hmm. Makongeni Mac police post. Yeah. Just, you, you know, just read it because sometimes when I read it, yeah. people, people think you're, people you're, think you're I'm, making I'm it crazy. up. Yeah. It says Makongeni Makongeni police post, yeah. dog kennels, 200,000 shillings. Jesus Christ. Are these things, are they being built, you know, with a separate room for massages? <laughs> You know, yeah. with the kitchen and toilet. <laughs> for the dogs. <laughs> for, the, for the dogs. Yeah. And I'm sure even the policemen don't even have stuff. Uh, they, ha they don't even have rooms. No. There are police posts in Juja which didn't have electricity since 2008. All of a sudden, because in a, they, there's an election, we can see lights in them. For now. For now. And yet 200,000 for dog kennels? For dog kennels. I've showed you three other articles with the same allocations. Here you'll see Pit latrines for 300,000. Come on, Jeff. Let's, let's be realistic and say that, you know, let, let's stop all the lies, let's stop everything, and let's work for the people of Juja because the people of Juja want results. That's all they're asking for. They're not asking for, you know, many things. They, they don't even want your money. Yeah. First, they want you to be available, and that's what I've pledged. I'm going, I'm not relocating from the constituency. You're going to stay in? I'm going to stay there. And nobody else can give that guarantee. I'm going to stay there. So when the people need me, yeah. when they have a harambe, when somebody has been shot, I will be there. First to pursue it to the local administration. If there is no action over there, then I will take it a notch higher. I will go and petition the minister in parliament and ask as many questions, even if it's every other day. Tell them, why is, did so-and-so get killed? Why is, did so-and-so get shot? You know, summarily, why were these young people harassed while they were walking in town? Because that's a major issue. Yeah. The, the guys are just walking from somewhere and, and you know, some, the Maria, it's called the Black Maria, mm -hmm. just comes and sweeps them. And these people are just going out somewhere to have fun. That has to stop. Francis, I want to talk more about that because that's, you know, I think that's really interesting. And those are, that goes down to the core basics yeah. of the people. Yeah. I also want to talk about a little comparison. The constituency of Gatanga yes. is right next to Juja. Yes. Why is it that when you look at Gatanga and you look at Juja, it's like night and day? Yes. Why? Yes. It's such a rich constituency. Yes. And number three, you're young, man. You're yeah. so young. Yeah. Do you have the energy to go all the way? Yeah, yeah. Let's take a break. Okay. Francis Gaidonganga, I tell you, his entire vision is in this newsletter. And it's in just about every home in Juja. He's been going door to door selling his vision. He says at 29 years old, change is inevitable and change is coming and as he says in his poster change is new francis gaidonganga says he is the man for the change are you listening people of juja don't even think of going away because the bench is just warming up yeah and we'll be back in a moment <laughs> And welcome back to Capital Talk. It's all about Juja this week. 187,000 votes up for grabs. And those of you who thought it was a race between the big three, well, think again. There's a young man, 29 years old, who has his vision. 
in a newsletter. He says he's going door to door. He doesn't want the public rallies. He doesn't want to do the things that other people do. He wants to do it differently. Why? Because he's an IT guru. He says IT is the 21st century and that's what he's bringing to Juja. And he says people of Juja are savvy enough to tell between what's right and what's wrong. Francis, so your youth, man, your yeah, youth. Yeah. What do people go when you go around shaking hands and yeah. stuff? Because this weekend you were shaking hands yeah, in that stadium, yeah, right? You were yeah. going around shaking hands. What uh, are people? Five thousand hands. Ah! Five thousand people in the municipal stadium. I shake the hands. Every one of them. And everyone is just telling me we are happy that you're, gra you're, you're on the ground with us because they're the guys we don't even get to see them. Yeah. They have bodyguards. They are on top of vehicles. I mean, people already are imagining they're already MPs. You can see them on top of the sunroofs and. <laughs> Yeah, or in helicopters. Yeah, or, or in those <laughs> contraptions. <laughs> so, yeah. so, and, and, and they're already imagining that they're MPs. I'm telling them, no, I'm with you. Call me anytime, I'll be there. You won't see a whole bunch of security guys because I have nothing to hide. I'm not dead. You're asking about um, because the fact that I'm young and, and, and who I am. Mm. First of all, as you know, um, I'm not a son of the royalty in Kenya. I'm just, I'm just your everyday average kind of guy. Yes. Not so good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Poor sense of humor. <laughs> Deprived childhood. Yes. Underrated education. Yeah. Come on, you too. <laughs> but you have a dream. I have a dream. Yes. And if what Obama did 10,000 miles away can inspire me, can you imagine the ripple effect of my candidacy? in Juja and in the country. I'm telling you it is going to set the precedence for a national movement for change, where we are saying, let's do things in a different way. I'm telling you, I think Kenya is ready for an Obama. Mm -hmm. You know why? The other day I, I was monitoring the campaigns in Juja. And you know, we've, we live together, we work together. Somebody calls a meeting and you know, calls a certain community. Calls them the Kamba community. Mm -hmm. Come here and if you vote for me, um, it will be something because up there somebody will run and uh, he'll be my running mate and we are tired of that kind of gibberish. Look, our age, our age, you know, 40 and below, mm -hmm. we've intermarried. You know, you, uh, the other day I was taking my friend to Kisumu. Uh, we were going to pay bride price for, for his wife and, and, and we've, I've taken my friends also to, 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 to Londiani. And other, we've intermarried. Yeah. We are of that one tribe called Kenya. And people, the moment people understand that we have that one tribe, and further, the only two tribes in Kenya are the haves and the have-nots, then we can be able to move forward. And But don't come and balkanize us. We've been living in peace. We work together. People are the same ones. Shukariyako ikiisha, unenda unaomba ya jirani. And then all of a sudden, you call this community and tell them, I'm going to do so. When the council is serving people, when the CDF is serving people, they don't serve by tribe, they don't serve by community, they serve the people of Juja. And that's what I'm telling them, I won't serve this community, I won't serve that community, I will serve every person equally, man, woman and child. I will serve them equally and my vision is going to encapsulate all their hopes and aspirations and that's what I want. Mm, let me ask you this, uh, Gaido. For someone who grew up in Juja, yeah. think it down. Yeah. Rich constituency, yeah. lots of pineapples yeah. you know, and other industries. Yeah. And you look across yeah. and you see Gatanga yeah. and what Peter Kenneth has done to transform yeah. that. Yeah. Does it disgust you? Does it embarrass you? Does it make you wonder, what happened to us? Where did we go wrong? Yeah. I don't really want to get into the nitty gritties about Peter Kenneth <laughs> <laughs> for obvious reasons. Yes. But all I can say is that if some people um, are focused, and if the community is focused, and if you, if you employ credible people, then work can be done. So it's, it's all about the mindset. I don't believe Peter Kenneth has done something very special. He's, I think his community came to the point where they said they wanted change, and they elected him because they thought he was a change. I hope they are happy with their decision. And that's why I'm saying Juja is at that particular point where they also need change. They also want to be mentioned in some of the best managed constituencies. That's what they want. Yeah. So I, I, um, with regards to him as a person, I, I don't really want to get there. Yeah. Uh, but Juja can be like Gatanga, can't it? Or better? Juja can be 10 times better than Gatanga. Gatanga is a small constituency. Gatanga is a very small. So 
actually allocating the resources um, and making roads is easier. But for Juja, it's the human resource that I want to tap. It's the young minds, the young brains. They're very ingenious. I'll tell you, Juja has four universities. Kenyatta University, Jomo Kenyatta, Gretsa, and Mount Kenya University. Kenyatta University is a school specializing in arts. We want those people to have a favorable climate, to make a living from their trade. And that's why I will also be in parliament following up on things like, I talked about the fiber optic cable previously. Why do we have three fiber optic cables in Mombasa and our internet costs are still high? We need these people to start streaming their projects online so they, we, they, can, they can open up their markets. If KU is churning out all these graduates, even though they are from all over the country, I'm very sure, and it's happening, that all of them will live in the constituency. All these other people, there are so many skilled personnel, and that's why I was telling you, every, every month from my salary as a member of parliament, I'll just pay a haul, invite people. After I've done an audit to know everyone, all the skilled and unskilled people who are in Juja, I will call an audit. Uh, I will call a roundtable meeting. Call all the investors in the constituency. Tell them why are you giving your transport business to people from other towns? Why are you giving your supply contracts to people from other towns? They have to understand as investors that if they help companies, providers, and consultants from the local community, then their cost of security will go down. Right now, I'll tell you, some companies are paying millions upon millions just for security. Mm. And why? Why, why? why are they doing that? Because young people don't have jobs. Young people don't have opportunities. If you tell them, if you speak to them in a language they can be able to understand, I believe the companies are ready to work with the people of Juja. I'm the first one who has come with such an agenda. And I know that particular action can translate into many jobs. And I'm saying I am there. I will do it for the people of Juja. Yeah, and these ghost projects we hear about, these CDF yes. so-called projects yes. that never materialize, yes. will you be different? How different will you be? First of all, I'm the only one who has gone on record to say that I will only appoint clean people of integrity and honesty and also transparency and accountability. I'm in IT. All my work has to be documented online. There has to be a monthly newsletter or a quarterly newsletter like this one distributed for free to all the constituents. You see the status of every, uh, of every project. Also, with regards to appointing credible people, not very many people can do that. Look at Kenya right now. Look at some of the top people in government. The May scandal, mm -hmm. the oil scandal, mm -hmm. Triton. the Triton, the, the sugar scandals. All of them are still in office. Yeah. It takes guts for somebody to say I will only appoint clean and reputable people in my committees and I've said it nobody else has said it because that's where that's that's a problem is because somebody gets elected and then you get the biggest crook and make him a councillor yeah. and nominate him as a councillor and what does that that person do all the public utility land I'm telling you I had I, I told you about my court process, mm -hmm. uh, my, my, court, my court case. Yes, against the immediate former MP. Yes, he took me to court because there was a platform, an IT platform, which people assume that I was in charge of. But it's people who are coming there to say this land is being grabbed. There are no playgrounds in Juja, I'm telling you. No playgrounds. It's all gone. And do you know what they wanted to go for? For the Fika Municipal Stadiums. There were beacons, people there were going to subdivide it into plots. Um, it's, 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 it's amazing what the, 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 the gluttony that we have seen in Juja, what, the kind of corruption that has taken place within the last two and a half years has never been seen in Juja before in history. Hmm. It has never. And I would, I would like you, I would petition you as K24 to go on the ground and ask for these things because you might see like I'm lying. It's hmm. not an election agenda. I'm telling you the facts on the ground. Yeah. So I am saying I will only appoint clean and credible people. Secondly, my model of the CDF, there are 69 polling stations in Juja constituency. 20 people per polling station. We will uh, distribute the money equally amongst the 69 polling stations so that those 20 people will be the ones nominating their uh, the, the projects, vetting their projects and implementing the projects. But they will also do it in consultation with the entire community. 
so that I am not there as an MP all the time uh, being doing unilateral decisions, saying do this, do the toilets, do the what. No, it's the people. And that's the concept of the CDF fund, is for the community to decide what they want. I'm saying I'm taking it a notch higher. I am, devo I am decentralizing the CDF so that the national office is just for, you know, just ordinary, you know, ordinary work, you know, management work. Mm. But it's the committees that will be working down there. And I'm saying if they vote me in, they will see a change they've never seen before in Juja. Mm. Yeah. A nobody. You, you mentioned you call yourself a nobody. Just a, An just ordinary? Your average guy. <laughs> An average guy. Four weeks ago, if you saw me, yeah. I was just somewhere there, seated I, down. I would have you passed have you in the streets. You passed me in the streets. Correct. Yeah. Can an ordinary guy, can an ordinary guy defeat the so-called big three? Can you, can you deep down inside tell me or tell your constituents, I can beat these guys, change, I can do the inevitable or the impossible? Everyone who has been elected in parliament uh, since 2002, it's been their first time. And uh, they do try, especially when they're mudslinging me, they do try to talk about experience. And I repeat it once again, I don't have experience in land grabbing. I don't have experience in, uh, in looting of public funds. I don't have that kind of experience. I'm just telling people to bank on my energy, bank on my ideas, bank on my integrity. And oh, that's why none of them is talking about their party. I'm talking about Safina party. I'm telling you things that are guaranteed in the Safina constitution. Equal representation on the basis of age, uh, gender and persons with disability. Nobody else can come and tell you that about their party. I'm telling you, I didn't get a direct nomination. There was a vetting process. Three people, and I came out tops. I didn't, get, I didn't buy my nomination certificate. Nobody else can talk about that. And I'm telling them, change has to start. Don't, don't wait for somebody to get into office to bring change. I'm telling you, I am, I am the face of change in Juja. And if people bank on that, like the way they banked with Obama, anything is possible. Anything is possible, Jeff. You're yeah. taking this? I'm taking it head on. My brother. Yes. Good luck. Good luck. Well done, uh, Thank man. you, thank well you, thank done. you, thank you. 29 and smart. Yes. Man. 29 and wise beyond his ears, he says, change is coming. People of Juja, are you listening? If you're not happy or satisfied with the so-called big three, there's a 29-year-old young IT guru right here on the bench who says he, because he grew up in Thika, in, and he knows about Juja and its problems. He can help. He can start. He can be with you. Francis Gaido Nganga says he'll take them on and he's winning come September the 20th. Think about it, folks. At the end of the day, I keep saying this, you get what you deserve. And you can find guests like this anywhere else but right here on the bench on the award-winning station K24 where we are. As always, even in times of change, we are all Kenyan. All the time. Can I get an autograph? <laughs> <laughs>